we're in the real world. We're on a job site. And the pattern is off in, in eight feet, we are seven and a half feet here. This pattern is off. If you, if you, match, if you match it right up here at the end, let's get it matched. Right there. And if you look, this has a little bit of a, a bow to it, side bow. I'm laid on, I'm gapped up here. I'm tight here, I'm gapped again up here. So believe it or not, by looking at this, this has a little bit of a deviation. What does it have? If I get this all tight up here, this is, de this is deviating in one way, uh, just, just about, just over a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, almost a half inch. So it's intolerance. They can say you can make that work. It's within that half inch on each side. So, but this does have one. Now, also, I'm on my pattern up here. And I am five eighths of an inch pattern elongation and seven and a half feet in tolerance. All right. It's right, but it's on the high end because, you know, I can only go an inch and ten, and, and, uh, ten feet. So it's, if, I went to another, if I went another three more feet, it could have been very close, been close to an inch. Yeah. All right? Now, here's your choice. Do you start in the center <coughs> and line it up in the center? Now, that's only going to give me going each way. It's off each way. I only got to work with it about a quarter inch each way and get it to line up? Or do I start at one end and work down? If it's only running off this much here, I'm going to start at one end and work my way down. All right? Now, or there, if you have a big room, you got to start in the middle. Right? If you have, if I had, now if I had, if I had a big room, okay, and I rolled it out, and if I had a room that was a 20 foot long seam, and I'm only running three quarters of an inch and 20 feet, I'll probably start at one end and work up. Because I can pull, with the products I have and the tools that I'm using, I can pull that along and move it up with no problem whatsoever. Now, if I had 20 feet and I had two inches to deal with, then I'm going to start it in the center and work an inch both ways. So, so it all depends on what my pattern elongation is on how I'm going to work it. All right? Running your iron underneath that you're running underneath is not what does the damage. It's when you're pulling your seam weight up because you're getting the top fibers hot and now you're bringing them up the other way. It can cause you to uh, change that, give a shading of the pile direction. There again, you have a couple options. Now, I'm going to still run it against the drain, but when I move my weight, I'm going to pick it up and set it down. I'm not going to pull it. Because if I pick it up and set it down, then I'm not pulling it up again and causing my pile to stand up the opposite way and, and take a chance of resetting the, the fiber. All right? Now, when we're going to use that with a cool glide there, doesn't matter because the heat's heating from the bottom up. Fibers aren't getting hot. Then it's not going to hurt anything because you're not. Because what it is is when you're heating these fibers and they're hot, and then you run your weight up against the grain, you're standing it up and could change the you know could cause some cause some shading at the seam, right? So yeah, you know. But it's not again. There again. What you're going to do, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to, get my, I'm going to get my pattern elongation out of a nail it here. Bring, uh, if it's a long room, 20-foot room, I'm bringing my dead man in. I'm going to power stretch off my dead man. I'm going to stain nail it. Then I'm going to walk around and see if it works, see if I got it lined up. All right. And then it's all stain nailed. Then I can go start running my iron, and I can fine-tune it. All right. 
Call me a little bit of a control freak if you want. I like to have control of what I'm doing. And that's why I don't drink, you know, because that way I can never get blamed for something I didn't know I did. You know, <laughs> you were, you, what do you mean? You were drunk and you did that. No, <laughs> you know, uh, so, so I don't drink. That way, that way if I get in trouble, I know I got in trouble and why, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, with, we ran the row. You ran that row over there, right? You cut it. If you would have jumped off a row, what would you have done? Re rerun it and recut it, right? You have control of that. All right? I ran my uh, seam sealer, whether it be your latex or hot glue gun, which you need to really think about switching over to because you'll find that you'll find you'll like it. You get used to it, you'll like it. I have installed the installers in my shop. If you try to take their hot glue gun away from them, they'd beat you upside the head. Is that they were they were through these tips, I'm, and I'm constantly buying them new. Get, well, not every day because they it would work quite a while. But I need another tip, Ron. Right? They use you know that that they, they, they use it, and I'm talking about guys been doing it 30, 33, 34 years. They love it, you know. So anyway, uh, you control putting the latex on the side. Now, when I Pick this up, and I put this iron down here. Which way does this go? Oh. <laughs> All right. When I put this iron down here, now, who has control? No, I don't. I don't know. I, I just lost control of the seam. Why? That, that iron's got to move at a certain speed. Right? If I don't move that at a certain speed, I can overheat the back of the carpet. I can overmelt the tape or not melt the tape enough if I move it too fast. So it's controlling how long it's going to sit there, not me. So it takes over. All right, that's another reason why I like that. I control that, but we'll do that next. So, we decided to go from here. We get it, we get her melted. And this, I'll get my, I'll get my aunt on. Because this is a cut loop. I'm using my non-heat conductive uh, seam white, uh, seam roller. All right. Now, I'm going to come up here and get it together. Now, if this, if I'm using my regular weight, all right, I've got a little bit of a gap here where it's, where it's pulled apart a little bit. When I move it up here now, see the gap? What I got to do? I got to do this. All right? It's possible. Have you ever had it to where you had it nice and tight, all of a sudden you notice you had a, a lippage that overlapped? When you do this, if this is still hot, it could give it to where it popped up and give you a little bit of lippage. I'm going to bring this down. Feel the weight. Grab it up. It's sucking the tape up into the backing. It's locking it in place. And it's cooling it at the same time. All right? Now I can move this. All right? I can move it in. Because, because that, because that tape is cooling and sucking it up into the backing, it's not letting it move. It's not letting it relax. It's not letting it come off. It's locking it in. It's bringing that tape tight right up into the backing and cooling it right away. 